and welcome to today's lesson, Identify Models Multiplying Fractions. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to take this picture and put it into problem form. So we should have two factors and a product at the end. The first thing that I'm going to notice is that I'm already in product form and there's nothing separate I have to do. So it's easiest to write the product first. Remember the product, the numerator is going to be whatever has both shadings. So essentially I'm looking for the different color, which is orange in this case. So I have one box that has both shadings. That's going to represent the numerator for my product. Next, I'm going to look at the total number of boxes shown in this image. I can see that I have going up and down 1, 2, 3, 4, and going across 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 4 times 5 is 20. So my product is 1 20th. Next, I'm going to imagine separating this picture into two separate images, one that has only rows and one that has only columns. I'm going to start with my rows here. So I'm going to start by counting going left to right, how many rows are there? And each arrow is representing a row. So I can see I have four total rows. That's the denominator for my first factor. Now that I know how many rows there are, I should ask myself how many rows out of four are shaded? That's going to represent the numerator for my first factor. Remember, I'm only looking this direction. I'm not looking up and down. And the coloring has to cover all the way across. So I can see that I have one row shaded. If I was to draw that separately, this is what the image would look like, one fourth. Next, I'm going to look at simply my columns. So I'm going to ignore anything left to right and try to imagine it just going up and down. So each of these arrows at the bottom represents my columns. I can see I have five. Then I should ask myself, how many columns out of five are shaded? So I'm only looking in this direction. And remember, the shading has to carry from the bottom all the way to the top. So I only have one column that is shaded. And that would look like this as an image. Now that I have separated it into two images and I can see the product, I can write out the entire equation, which is 1 fourth times 1 fifth equals 1 twentieth. Let's try another one. On this example, I'm going to always, of course, start with my product. So I can see that I have six boxes that have two shadings. Remember, we're looking for something with two shadings. For going up and down here and across, that's going to tell me my total box is shown. So going up and down, I have five sections and going across, I have three. Five times three is 15. Now I'm ready to start thinking about what two separate images combined to make this one. So I'm going to first start by looking at my rows. So going across, I have a total of five arrows, which means I have five rows. That represents the denominator. For the numerator, I should ask how many rows out of five are shaded? And I can see I have one, two, three. Remember, I am looking all the way across and the shading has to carry all the way across. So I have three fifths. If I was to draw it separately, it would look like this. Next, I'm going to look at my columns. I only have three columns here. So I'm going to ask myself how many columns out of three are shaded. So I'm looking up and down and remember the coloring has to cover from the top to the bottom. So I have one, two total columns that have been shaded or two thirds. If I drew it as a separate image, it would look like this. Now that I have my problem, I need to do one last step. If you notice at the beginning, 6 fifteenths is something that can simplify. So if I was to simplify, I would divide out a three and six divided by three is two, 15 divided by three is five. So this problem is three fifths times two thirds equals six fifteenths, which simplifies to two fifths. Let's wrap up. For writing a problem from a model, you'll start by writing the product or the answer for the problem. Next, write the first factor by looking only at rows or horizontally. 
Then write the second factor looking only at columns or vertically. That wraps up our lesson. Thanks so much for tuning in. Feel free to click to subscribe for this and other videos. Until next time!